Hey guys and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video with your boy, The Real Deal. So first off, the heat wave is still going on in the UK, it's 40 degrees right now, so I am a right sweaty Betty, um, for sure. So, um, yeah, and as you can see, I am in a, tink, uh, in a tink top, I am in a tank top. I know no one wants to see that, but sometimes you just got to roll with it. Anyway, so today we're going to be doing something really important. Um, we are going to be learning how to build and upgrade your defensive teams for 3v3 arena. So um, why is it important? So for me, um, I can get into gold one and gold two very easily for 3v3, but staying there is a different story. Um, you know, my 3v3 um, defensive teams aren't quite up to scratch and people are just slamming me back down into silver four. So I'm not happy about it. And it's time to make a change. So we'll be sorting out my, I'm going to use my arena teams as examples. I'm going to talk why they're good, but then I'm going to upgrade them and tell you why that is better and why they are better sort of to help me stay. So we'll go through that in a moment. Uh, the other thing that's really important about uh, arena defense as well is that in the future, um, they're going to be introducing live PVP. And I just want to be prepared for that. And I definitely feel the meta will change for live arena. So having defensive teams is actually going to be really useful for that as well. You know what they say, if you've got a strong defense, you've got a strong offense. Doesn't really apply to raid though, because you need a strong offense and a strong defense. But you know what I mean. Anyway, so we're going to have a look at my teams first. So I'm going to sort of go with the team that I've currently got. And then we're going to... Everyone in my clan says I'm a massive nerd because I love a spreadsheet, but I'm going to use a spreadsheet to show you what I've got and what I'm going to be working to. And then I'm going to upgrade it, which is going to take me some time to do. Um, I probably will get a haircut as well. So you may notice that my hair gets a bit shorter during, throughout the video, but that's fine. Uh, we'll learn to live with it. Um, and yeah, and the other thing is when you're free to play, we only level champions during champion training. We only upgrade our artifacts during artifact uh, training, uh, artifact upgrading events. So it is going to take time, but I will show the process and then I'll talk. I will compare my old team to my new team and tell you why it is so much better and why it should help me stay and progress in uh, 3v3. And hopefully that live PvP whenever it gets released. So let's have a look at my first team first. So we got Arb, Hedgy, Madame, and Gembo. Uh, I really like this team comp, but it's just not strong enough for 3v3 anymore in Gold 1 and Gold 2. Um, so we've got Arbiter for Speed, who, you know, when you sort of get to that sort of level, all the whales and crack krakens start coming out, and they've all got Tormans and stuff, so they do count this quite hard. But anyway, um, Hedgy wants just to make sure we go in there first. He's in a day set, and he's really giving our team control. Uh, Madame, she is literally just in there to strip buffs. I don't really care about that decrease defense. The decrease attacks nice though because it does give you a bit of survivability if needed. Uh, Gembo is in a swift parry set, which does catch people off guard because they think they're going to kill him, but he just manages to stay alive. Um, and then he'll turn around and just slam their team. He hits surprisingly hard for an epic. And, you know, he's not even in Savage, which is just insane. Um, however, you do need to set this team up. Um, so with Madame, you need to make sure that she prioritizes that midnight ritual first so she does strip those buffs. And with Gembo, he's just brain dead. I don't know what they were thinking when they programmed him, but he's got this amazing move, which is called Sword Trance, where basically he increases his crit rate and crit damage and then gets an extra turn. For some reason, he doesn't do that first. He'll either do his A1 or his A2, depending on how he feels. And then you've got to tell him, no, we want you to do your big AOE smack second. So yeah, really important that you make sure that they do this in the right order. So next team comp, I've talked about this team so many times before, but I do love it. Um, but as well, when you start to get higher up, this team does not have such a higher win rate. It is starting to fall off now. Um, so we've got Lydia in there for her um, resistance aura. Um, she's bringing in speed. Well, she increases our team speed. She gives us survivability with strengthen. She throws out decreased defense and weaken. And she blocks revive. And she can revive your teammates if she's alive. And she blocks revive. But yeah, she's a great champion. Uh, next up, 
got Seeker, who's basically given our team survivability. He's in a shield set and he's just got HP everywhere. HP chest, HP boots, HP gloves, HP banner, HP necklace, HP ring. Every substat under the sun is HP percentage. So yeah, you just stack him with HP and then you put Bulwark on him, the mastery Bulwark, which basically means um, he will absorb all the damage from your team and it goes to him. So it's just giving our team that extra survivability. Um, next up, we've got uh, Sandslash, who is in Stone Skin. Um, so basically, she's absor helping keep the rest of the team alive. She's absorbing damage. She blocks, puts block damage on herself, puts ally protection on her colleagues, and keeps everyone alive. And she absolutely smacks as well. So when she gets counterattacks or when she actually finally has her go, she's more like more than likely to block someone. Uh, sorry, block. She's more likely to get a couple of kills on the enemy team. Uh, Helior, you want to set him up so that he does his A3 first. So basically, he's going to cleanse the team. And what he'll do is, you know, any bombs, any CC that's on us, any drop defense or anything like that, he's going to take it all off our team and throw it back at the enemy and he's going to kill someone or do some serious damage. And yeah, love Helio, great champion. And the way he works is um, the more, I'm trying to think, the more resistance you give him, the more accuracy he has. So you just put him in loads of resistance. So mine's in a triple resistance set and you just want to keep lots of defense on him. You need crit rate, you need crit damage. And um, to be fair, he works really well on stone skin as well. So that is also another option for him. Uh, last team which looks like it's probably the worst team out of all three of them, is surprisingly my best team, and it does catch a lot of people off guard. So we've got Skullcrown in there, who um, A1 um, does an AoE hit, so it pairs up really nicely with Valkyrie. So um, Valkyrie is an immunity set. She's really fast, lots of accuracy, so she is likely to go first and um, give us counterattacks and big fat shields. And she's going to push back, push back their turn meter as well, um, Yoshi, he's going to cut in, he's going to throw out fears, he's going to boost our turn meter as well. And then we've got Mithrala, who is going to cleanse for our team, because it's almost impossible to CC a Mithrala, because um, she has such high resistance because of her passive. But also, she can throw out Hex to the enemy team, which means we're going to do more damage to them. But also, if they hit us, more than likely, they're going to trigger petrification as well, so we're going to CC them. So this is a solid, solid team comp. But anyway, so this is my old team comp. Now we're going to bust out the spreadsheet. I know, I'm a massive nerd. So we're going to bust out the spreadsheet and we're going to look at what we've got now and what we're going to be working for to the future. So this is my spreadsheet of genusnessness. So team one, we've got Arbiter. And then the gear set that we're interested in is triple speed. Um, stats, we just want as much speed as possible. That's all we care about. Where only speed is the only thing we care about. Hegemon, he's going to be in a day set and probably speed. Um, and then the substats that we're after are speed and accuracy. Um, of course, then you can start to think about like HP and defense and survivability. But at the moment, that's all we care about for our CC Hegemon. But damn, we just want speed and then two times perception. So she just wants speed and accuracy. And then, of course, same as Hegemon. Then we look at that survivability. Gembo, he's our new car. All we care about is speed, attack, crit rate, and crit damage. So we're going to look at the new teams now. So new team, we've got Arbiter. Um, and what I've done here differently is I've added in Masteries because I know that not all my champions have their Masteries. So if their Masteries are done, they've got a um, green tick um, or green green blob. If they're red, it means I haven't done them, so I need to work on that as well. So, and then in, these are the gear sets that I'm thinking about. So, of course, Arbiter again. So, luckily, I've managed to pull a second Arbiter. So, I'm going to have two Arbiters that are super fast. Um, and I've actually got three Valkyries as well. And they're all pretty much going to be built the same. They're just going to be all in untouchable or... Um, what's that? Immunity set. So, we're going to be untouchable or immunity... And basically, we just want speed, accuracy, and defense. So I'm probably going to go defense on the chest and gloves. Just give us more shield and um, just a bit more survivability for Valkyrie. And then speed, and then as much speed as possible, really, really fast. And then a decent amount of accuracy. Um, accuracy, I'm going to aim for about 400. I did think about, 
I did have one of my Valkyries. I think she's got 600 accuracy at the moment. But thinking about it, it's not so important because the person that I'm really looking back, looking to push their team me back is probably going to be um, their drop defense champion, Anuka. And they're probably not going to have that much resistance. So, so having like 400 accuracy, 450, that will probably actually be enough. So rather than have an accuracy chest, I'm going to have a defensive one. Um, and of course, the other thing is we want defense, uh, necklace and uh, ring with the, uh, sorry, with uh, defense uh, substats. And the necklace, of course, is going to have accuracy on it and probably going to have accuracy banner as well, just how we do reach the requirements we need. Hegemon, so I'm going to actually upgrade mine to a stun set. And same again, just speed and accuracy. So I'm going to swap out my Gembo for a Rotos because Rotos can just start popping off. And paired with a Valkyrie, he is just going to do work for us. So mine's currently built um, as a like pure nuker. So he's just in Savage gear with attack chest, um, crit damage gauntlet, and all that sort of stuff. So I'm actually going to switch mine up and put him in um, either Savage and probably Speed. And I'm, current, I'm actually going to focus on Speed and HP, then crit rate and crit damage. So I'm just going to try a different build on Rotos and see how that goes. Um, my next team is going to be Arbiter, Valkyrie, Lydia, and Trunda. So um, Arbiter, again, just to make sure we go first, having that speed. Valkyrie, just to get those current attacks and push back that 10 meter. Lydia, just to block revives um, and all that sort of nasty stuff that she does. And then Trunda, just to absolutely slam. And this should be like quite a nasty team comp. And then bottom team, we've got Mortu, who's great. Um, how he sort of works is that he only needs to kill sort of one champion and get that block revive. And what will sort of happen with him is that usually he will just drop the enemy's nuka. And if they've, if they've only brought in one nuka and he kills them, that is a win because they're not going to be able to kill the rest of your team. So we're going to have Mortu, 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 Mortu in there. And you can build him loads of different ways. I think you could either go Swift Parry, Immortal, Stone Skin. I'm probably going to put mine in Stone Skin. And all I care about is loads of HP, uh, crit damage, crit rate, and resistance. If I can get some in there and a bit of speed as well. Valkyrie, same build again. And this is, I, I know not everyone has this luxury. It is just the way your account is. Um, you know, I wasn't too happy when I pulled all these Valkyries. But do you know what? For this, Triple Valkyrie is going to make it really hard for someone to be able to beat me. Then, um, you know, they're going to need to have like three Tormans or something like that. So it is going to make it really difficult for people to beat me. Um, great thing that I've got as well is I've got Blind Seer. So my Blind Seer is just going to be super fast, just like my Arbiters. Um, and the reason for that is she throws out block debuffs first. So she actually counters uh, Tormund. So my Blind Seer is going to be really fast, just like my Arbiters. And what's great about Blind Seer is she counters Tormen. So she's going to throw out block debuffs first. Um, and then it doesn't matter because Valkyrie can then throw out our current attack as well. So we can't be interrupted there. Um, great thing about Blind Seer as well is that she can revive as well and put out block damage when she revives. So really, really solid. And more to being really tanky and doing insane damage really it's going to be really hard for someone to beat and then we've got um kaioku who you know um just amazing champion um she's really going to help give survivability she throws out um you know she does block damage to herself and then throws out ally protection on your teammates solid solid champion i really want to put a protection set on her because she's um throwing out these uh you know these buffs and we don't want the team enemy team to be able to take them away from us so as Another one that I want to be as fast as possible. Then we sort of want HP and defense on her and then resistance. So yeah, so hopefully um, that's really going to, you know, give our team that survivability and make it really hard for someone to beat this team comp. So why is the team on the right better than the team on the left? Um, it's just mainly it's because we've got three Valkyries in there, which is going to make it really hard for the enemy team. And we've got a lot of speed as well. So we've sort of got three speed teams as well. So that means they're going to have to have lots of fast champions to beat us. And they're going to have to have 
Tormund or some way to deal with these Valkyries. And, you know, it's going to be really difficult to deal with that Blind Seer and that Mortu and that Valkyrie and that Kaioku. The whole point of this team is, one, we want to look as threatening as possible. But also, we just want to be as difficult for the enemy team to deal with. And, you know, they're going to need a lot a lot of champions that need a lot of skills to sort of be able to, to deal with this. So that's the whole point. So now let's move on to, I'm not going to build all the champions, but I'm going to build out a couple of them for you and show you how I would do it. Hey guys, and I'm back. So you may have noticed, I told you, I told you I was going to get my hair cut. Um, yeah, so it's a lot shorter. The guy has butchered me to death. I said, I was like, I just want number one on the side. I don't know what I'm doing. And he's just, yeah, he got a bit of a trigger happy with the scissors. But yeah, do you know what? Never realized how big my forehead is. Look at that. That is a good, good six inches of forehead going on right there. But anyway, let's get back to the video. So what I'm going to do is I want to start with team three. And um, I think it's the most interesting team comp. So I'm going to show you how the process of gearing my champions and I'll show you the masteries for all of them. And we'll go from starting off with more two and work our way across to uh, Kouku. So let's get on with uh, more two. So at the moment, he's in Swift Parry, um, but I've decided I want to put him in um, Stone Skin just because Stone Skin is, you know, it's just so annoying for people to deal with. So I, I know everyone knows how annoying Stone Skin is, and yeah, it is just super annoying for anyone to deal with. So I definitely think Stone Skin is the way to go over Swift Parry. So for this one, we are going to use Hell Hades website to um, gear him out. So let's switch. So we'll just have a quick look at his stats before we start switching stuff up. So 68k HP, uh, 180 speed, that's fine. N he doesn't need to be fast. It's all about his counter-attacks with that peril. Um, 94 crit rate would like it to be 100. And 310 crit damage is pretty decent. And we don't care about anything else. It's just HP, crit rate, and crit damage. That's all we care about. So like I said, we're going to switch him up in stone skin. And we're going to use the Hell Hades... Um, artifact tool for this one so let's hop onto that so we're on the hell hades optimizer tool um it is an amazing piece of kit so it's definitely worth you know having a play with it i think take about 10 minutes to learn it to be honest um and if you want to go more i'm just going to go through it very quickly very basic but if you want to go more in depth go on um hell hades youtube channel there's loads he's done so many videos on this and it is really worth spending some time and learning how to use it so you want to do um, GP Optimizer, it's so much better. Um, then go to Stats. So Stats for more two, we only care about HP, Crit Rate and Crit Damage. Um, so, you know, just push that up. So you can, um, with the weapon, obviously we want Crit Rate and Crit Damage gloves. Um, chest, um, HP, Boots. I'd love it to be HP Boots, but I know I don't have any uh, Stone Skin HP Boots. So we've only got Speed Ones. And then crit damage necklace that's probably the most important thing and just the other stuff so then sets um i don't i'd love to have a six piece stone skin but i just don't quite have enough good enough stone skin for this so we can go for four pieces because that gives you um that stone skin debuff uh, buff which is the most important thing that's the reason why we want stone skin it's only going to give us one turn um, so that's why ideally I'd like to have six pieces so we could get two turns, but we don't have that luxury, unfortunately. Um, and then, yeah, so you just click optimize at the top and then we press start. So the speeds are slow, but that's fine because it's all about that peril proc in. Um, so I look quite like the look of this one. Um, 103 crit rate, 304 crit damage um, and 72k HP. So yeah, I think I'm going to take that one. So we put the stone skin on him and we've got the crit damage uh, set as well. So let's have a look at his total stats. 70k HP, uh, 157 speed, which is perfectly fine. We want him to be slow. 103 crit rate, 317 crit damage. He is going to be dropping people in the arena. If his peril procs, they're not getting back up and he's keeping them down. That's exactly what we're after. Uh, we'll have a quick look at his masteries as well. So we've got Tough Skin going into Blast Proof, so reducing damage from AoE attacks. A Resurgence, so we've got a chance to remove debuffs if we're hit too hard. Delay on Death, just a bit more survivability. And then Counter Attacks. Um, yeah, so Offense is, 
it's a bit of a weird one compared to your usual uh, standard build, but obviously we've got that crit rate, we've got that extra crit damage. So we've got singled out, so increases damage inflicted to targets with less than 40 HP. Um, we didn't choose bring it down because he's got 70k HP, it's very unlikely the targets he's going to be hitting have more HP than that. Then we've got Ruthless Ambush, so we've got 8% more chance of increasing damage for the first hit we do on enemy, so when he procs out Pearl and he is single target, it means he's going to do more damage to each single person he hits, so that's really good. Um, opportunist, so if anyone's got um, Stun or Sleep or Fear on them, he's going to do more damage as well. Uh, Cycle Violence, so if he does hit someone really hard, that's going to reduce his cooldowns as well. Um, Blood Shield just seems like the best, like, it's very unlikely he's going to have um, debuffs on him. So it just makes sense that if he does um, do damage to someone, that he gets Blood Shield. And then we've gone down into Flawless Execution for an extra 20 crit damage. So yeah, so he looks like an absolute beast and we're going to test him out in a little bit. Uh, let's move on to Valkyrie. So we've got our Valk kitted out in Untouchable and Speed. Um, Untouchable is great. Having that block debuffs is just amazing. It'll stop anyone from CCing her and she'll be able to, you know, throw out that counter attack. So um, let's have a quick look. So we got her in Speed Boots, Accuracy Chest and Defensive Gloves. Um, a s accuracy banner as well, and then defense necklace and defense ring. Uh, total stats: 35k HP. A little bit on the low side, to be honest. Probably 40k and above would be nice. 4.8k uh, defense, not bad at all. She's not glyphed at all, so we could definitely bump that speed up from 247 to say 270 at a push. And that's if that's if they're all landing like max. But yeah, definitely doable. 388 accuracy, decent as well. We could definitely push that up to like 400 plus with uh, glyphs as well. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, just a quick thing. If you do book her, you only want her books to land in the A2. So if you're lucky, they all land in here. Unfortunately, I wasn't and they did land in the A1. So masteries and we've got accuracy. Then we're increasing the side of her, size of her shields. Um, this basically, obviously, she's doing counter attack and shields for the whole team. So that's going to keep her turn meter going, um, increasing the accuracy as well, just to help us um, push back people's turn, ma turn meter with her passive, but also her A1. Um, Law of Steel, just to help boost um, stats, so speed. Um, Evil Eye, to push back turn meter on that first hit. Master Hex are not used at all, but we just need it so we can go into Eagle Eye just to get that extra accuracy. Don't need that resistance, but we do want that improved parry to reduce um, critical hits that we receive. Uh, Rejuvenate is going to increase um, the size of shields. Um, Resurgent, great mastery. I, I bang on about it all the time, but it is a good one. Um, yeah, just that chance to remove debuffs is really powerful. Um, delay of death to reduce damage and then we've got cycle revenge just to keep our turn meter going and then we've got retribution just to if we get if we get lucky proc some counter attacks to that a1 and push keep the uh, enemies turn meters down with those counter attacks okay so we managed to get around 300 speed um still unglyphed as well so we can definitely bump that up 70 sorry almost 70k hp 60k not bad and I'd love that accuracy to be higher, but I just don't have an accuracy banner at the moment. So a bit annoying, but it will, you know, that's not so important. That's just a nice to have. Great thing as well is that even though we're 300 speed, we've still got Valkyrie on our team as well. So if someone's faster than us, we've got that chance of cutting in as well. And um, I've actually not fully rolled this up yet as well. So I will do that later. So masteries. Um, so HP. Um, she does have a shield buff, so that will increase that. Um, then we talk rapid response because she throws out a few, um, a few buffs, so that's going to increase our turn meter. Law of Steel, uh, Evil Eye to push back that turn meter even more. Spirit Haste, not really interested in. Um, we do want lasting gifts, and then of course we want that timely innovation uh, intervention to just cut in if our team does get wiped. So not interested in resilience. But we are interested in um, that improved parry to decrease um, critical hits on us. Wisdom of Battle, great skill. Um, so basically, when um, one of the CCs um, expires, we put a block debuff on ourselves as well. So it's like almost like we're guaranteed um, that next turn. Resurgent, another great move to remove debuffs from us as well. 
um, delay on death just to reduce that damage and then retribution just so we get a chance to proc that A1 and you know push back that 10 meter and on to Kaioku so um, we're going to be putting her in a protection set and because it's just going to be all protection um, I don't have a huge amount of protection we're just going to do this manually we're going to do it old school um, so let's just drop down and the reason I want protection set is because she throws out um, lo or not loads but she throws out a few buffs and that 30% chance to stop them being stripped is great. Um, protection set's great on champions like Seafy, Duchess, uh, Brogni. Um, any champion that's thrown out loads of buffs, that is a great set to put on them. Well, what am I doing? Okay, so one of the most important things is speed. So we really want her to be fast as well. Um, so let's go to the fitting room. So let's try on that. Okay, so don't have a great headpiece, so we'll just see what we got for shields. Okay, that one's 17, that's pretty decent. Okay, so I'm actually going to take the 16 over the 17 just because we've got resistance on it, so that's quite nice to have. Okay, we're going to take these defensive gloves. Um, but what you can do as well is, you know, this is just like a build for now. Um, and what we'll do is, as time goes on, you know, we will start to replace that gear out. So, what are the best boots? Okay, these ones by 100%. Okay, so we've got 221 speed, so she's not super, super fast, but she's not slow either. I think I'm going to chuck on... Oh, do you know what? She's just not got enough survivability, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to take off the chest and we're going to go through my immortal gear, give her a piece of immortal gear, uh, gear just to bump up that HP. Okay, so we've got the final build. Unfortunately, I don't have enough protection gear to cover the chest and the head. Um, so I'm going to have to work on that. But we've got some decent stats. So 60k HP, would like that to be more 70, but that's all right. 4.3k defense, pretty tasty, and 248 speed, nice. Um, so this isn't all glyphed up either, so we can definitely push that up a bit more. So yeah, so I'm pleased with this. So we're going to hop into, oh no, let's check our masteries out first. So masteries, HP, um, increasing the heals, cast first champion. So she does have um, a little heal that she does every now and then, um, just to um, increase her turn meter when the buffs expire. Um, we want cycle magic just to reduce cooldowns, lasting gifts to increase those buffs, and then timely intervention, just as like everyone else, basically just that chance to cut in, or if you know someone's HP drops, um, it's going to keep us going. So a bit of resistance, increase that critical damage, um, increase healing and shields that we receive, resurgence. Um, Shadow of Healing is really annoying with her. So basically when the enemy heals, we get a heal. So um, I've had this many times where they'll take out my new car and then I've got three tanky champions and three tanky champions can't take out Kaioku. Um, she just basically with that block damage and cycling and that she, when you get a heal, she gets a heal. It's just not possible. Um, this would be nice if I had more resistance on my team, but um, it's all right. Um, yeah, so basically each buff she places, she's going to get um, more resistance, but... We don't really have lots of resistance on her, but when I build, change the build up in the future, that's definitely going to help a lot. Delay on death again. A cycle of re uh, revenge, basically just to keep our turn meter going as well. And then basically she's going to take some of the damage from the rest of the team as well. So solid, solid build. Um, yeah, so let's move on to testing it out in Arena. Okay, so we've done our masteries, we've geared our champions, now it's time to put them to the test in Classical Arena. So we're going to go up against this Blender comp with Skullcrown and Senatia. It should hit ridiculously hard, but um, yeah, we're just going to see what happens. Um, my expectations are that we're probably going to get stomped, but um, yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so we actually managed to survive, so I'm quite impressed by that. Um, so... Okay, we're doing our thing. We've got some shields. Valkyrie's cut in. Nice. So how this team comp works is basically Koku is trying to put out that block damage. Uh, so she puts block damage on herself and then she's really reducing the damage that the enemy does to us with ally protection. 
Um, Blind's here. Hopefully she goes first and gets us a block um, debuffs on. And yeah, then we just want Valkyrie to basically push back their 10 meter, get those counter attacks and those big fat shields on us. And he's basically all about more to just hopefully just popping off. Um, you can see he did pop off on Skull Crown right there. But unfortunately, Skull Crown um, got that unkillable buff and we didn't do anything. But our team's still nice and healthy. So hopefully we should be able to win this one. All right, so we've got Skull Crown down. Oh, yeah. Back up from passive though, with um, being paired up with Sinesha. But I think we'll probably get her to stay down and sit down in a moment. Okay, Peril just popped. So when it hits, it hits hard. And with, if it hits them, it's doing probably about 120k um, damage. And they're not going to get back up from it. So yeah, insane ability. So now basically we're just hoping that we can just take out one more. Probably there. Oh, there we go the words right out of my mouth so he took out Sinatia and basically now it's just either we win by killing their team one by one or we just basically they can't win because um Kyoku is just unkillable and the only problem is my Kyoku she just needs that that protection set I really need to just get it maxed out for her um so these fights are going to be long but that's not a bad thing when you're on defense when you're on defense, you want to waste as much time with the enemy as possible. And this is what this team comp sort of designed to do. Fortunately, things didn't really go to our way. But this was a strong, like, offensive team comp we've gone against. Um, so it looks like we are going to get the win. Um, I guess another way I could build uh, Keiku is sort of maybe a regen with lots of resistance and HP. And basically, she'll just keep healing and it'll be really hard for them to you know, remove any um, buffs from us and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, good good work. So, yeah, as you can see, more two just popped off right there and just dropped their team. So I'm going to do a little bit more testing. Um, because the fights are so long with more two, I don't think anyone wants to sit there for, like, ages watching loads of different fights with him. So I'm basically I'm going to do some testing, do some screenshots, and then talk through it and then, like, see what I think of the team comp. Okay, so I did a lot of testing with this team. Um, I didn't get that many wins with it, to be honest, but we're gonna go through that now and have a look. So this is the first team I came up against. Got Arbiter, Tormund, Foley, Stagnite. So Tormund and Foley, really strong champions. Um, and I'm surprised we actually won this one because I thought Tormund was really gonna disrupt our team. You know, every time we throw out a buff, he is going to potentially freeze us. And also uh, Blind Seer, you know, um, if she doesn't get those block debuffs out first, because it's probably going to be quite a fast team, then that's really going to screw us over. However, we do manage to get the win. So now we're going to look at the next lot of uh, slides. So as you can see, this was on a loss. So sort of same team again, except we got Lydia and uh, Tamisia. Um, so this was a loss and took about two minutes. So not terrible, not really, really fast okay um and that's the thing as well i want to go against really strong teams because if you're going against weak teams you're not really going to put your defense to the test so yeah strong teams only i mean look at this team what what was i thinking arbiter cardinal Lioris, and rush guard so super strong there um really annoying team comp as well because obviously cardinal can revive he can cleanse Lioris has got unkillable and um, he can't be cc'd um, rush guard putting those block damage uh, buffs on the team as well so really really strong team there as well um, next team Lorchazar, Chagor, uh, Gaius and Arbiter so another strong strong team comp um, and yeah so 1 minute 42 there so still quite you know we really want to be either you want to win the fight or you want to sort of waste their time sort of five, seven minutes is what you sort of want to aim for. Um, here, one minute, 22. So Arbiter, Ray, Lydian, Duchess and plus one Ray and plus one Lydia. So like I said, we're going for really, really strong team comps. And you know, on reflection, um, I still think this is a really good team comp apart from Blind Seer. Um, it's potentially, I should maybe have built her two different ways. So either I could have gone really tanky with high resistance 
um, or and a bit slower, but she'd still be quite fast because she does have really high base speed. Or the other thing would be and uh, maybe put her in stone skin or something like that. But unfortunately, she is like the weak link in the team. I just feel that um, even though she might go first or cut in and put our block debuffs on our, our team, um, she's not given our team that survivability that we really need to go. We really need as a go second team. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut blind seer and do some more testing. Maybe use Brogni. Um, I mean, I could actually drop uh, Valkyrie as well, and maybe have like uh, Brogni and uh, Tuharnarak, who pair up really nicely together. And what's good about that is you want someone that's going to cleanse your team as well. And potentially, um, like a really good um, person for Blind Seer spot would be Cardinal, but I don't have him. Um, but yeah, I think he'd be really cool because obviously I think he works really well with uh, Mortu because he'll cleanse and throw out block debuffs. I guess a budget virgin version, not virgin, a budget version you could use would be um, a Sky Touch Shaman. Um, so just build her really tanky. She doesn't need to be super fast, just faster than the rest of your team. So she can come in, cleanse, put on block debuffs and, um, you know, um, what's that? Un uh, revive on death, which would really help our team out as well. So she could actually potentially a really good option. And once again, she'd have to be super tanky as well. Um, and I know typically you build her in immunity, but I think it's so predictable with this team comp, I wouldn't put her in immunity. I put her in high resistance and lots of HP. And, you know, just so she's the fastest person in our team so we can uh, cleanse. But anyway, um, so yeah, Blind Seer, she is the weak point in our team. She is the weakest link. Goodbye. So basically what I did is I went through all those teams that I lost with and I took out uh, Blind Seer and replaced her with Mithrala. Um, Mithrala is a great champion. Eventually everyone will end up getting her from Hydra. Um, and what's great about her is that she almost she's almost impossible to CC because she has um, in her passive basically however much accuracy she gets that gets converted to a uh, resistance and she's getting resistance as well. So she'll have like probably 800 resistance at least. Um, and it's so easy to just get those substats where there's accuracy and resistance on a piece as well. So yeah, and necklace as well. Usually, you know, you can get pieces that has that on both of them as well. So what does she bring? She's got a cleanse, strengthen, um, she puts out a shield, and then she also throws out hex on the enemy. And with that hex, she has a chance to put pet petrification on them as well. So, so strong. And as you can see, like this is a solid team with Tormin, Lydia, and Tamisia. And we, we just absolutely battered them. Um, even look at Mithrala actually did as much damage as Mortu, which is really surprising. She's not built for damage. And so what I'll, so what I'll do as well, so we're going to go through all these screenshots and then I'm going to show you Mithrala build. Okay, so on to the next screenshot. So again, look at this. This is a ridiculous team comp. Arbiter, Cardinal, Le Leores. Like these three here are like some of the best champions in the game. And we actually beat them with this team comp. Like I, I'll be honest, I am absolutely gobsmacked. Like considering how strong Leores is and Cardinal as well. And we absolutely smashed them out of the park. And in two minutes as well, like considering this is meant to sort of like, you know, slowly pick one champion off one by one and make it really hard for them to beat us. I'm I'm surprised that we actually managed to do it that fast. Oh my, and look at this. Lord Shazar, Shazog, uh, sorry, Chagor, Gaius. So what's really good about this is this this team has like CC, they've got bombs and, you know, bombs. There are, I, I actually personally love bombs. They are so good to use in the arena. But Mithrala, obviously, she's cleansed that. And yeah, and we've just turned around and just dropped their team. Okay, and this like this team as well, another strong team comp and another W. Um, yeah, Arbiter, Ray, Lydia, Duchess, like all really strong champions. And obviously Mortu's come in and picked them off one by one and blocking with that peril. Yeah. So this is definitely going to... So basically, I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet. I guess you guys don't care about that, but I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and take out Blind Seer and put back in Mithrala. I think I'm also going to strip Blind Seer of all that amazing speed gear I put on her because it was an absolute waste. Um, yeah, so I think this is something I want to say as well in the video that this is such a good thing 
they, I'm quite glad this has happened because sometimes, you know, you might think you have a good idea and you're like, build a team, it doesn't work. But rather than just give up or go back to the drawing board, you've gone, oh, wait a second, maybe if I do this or do that and just do some tests and stuff, you can actually build a decent team. So you shouldn't just, you know, you stumble the first hurdle, you don't just stop, you need to carry on and just keep working at it. And it's quite good that this sort of shows like my thought process because I could have completely edited this out and just made it look like, oh yeah, this was my team originally, blah, blah, blah. No, I want to be sort of open and honest about it and just sort of show you the process as well. So I think that's really, it's quite a cool thing that this has actually happened. So let's have a look at Mithrala and look at her gear and her masteries. So there's only two ways you can really build uh, Mithrala that I'm aware of. So that's either triple perception or stone skin. Uh, stone skin is really good because it gives us sort of two turns of survivability so that um, you can't kill her. Because even though it's hard to, you know, she's got really high resistance, you can still drop her. So just giving her that stone skin means that she's going to survive and it means she can cleanse and she can still lock out their team with petrification. So yeah, so mine's in a triple uh, perception set. I could definitely get the numbers up higher, but we'll just have a quick look at the stats. 61k HP, 3.8 defense, um, 229 speed. So actually, I think that's a really good speed for her. The rest of my team is faster than her. So um, she can basically, um, you know, she will be able to cleanse. And the other good thing is that the enemy will be faster than us and we will be able to, you know, remove any debuffs or bombs or whatever they've thrown us, we'll be able to cleanse that. So that means my Mithrail has got 200, no, sorry, 800 and sort of, oh God, 825, no, 845 resistance, which is just insane. That's really hard to get. Um, I could definitely bump these numbers up though, like um, get a, de uh, a better banner. Um, let's see what a necklace is. So necklace is actually pretty decent, but you know, Love to have a role, an extra role in resistance or accuracy, and it's not being glyphed either, so definitely could push that up. So mastery is pretty standard. Um, we want we want as much accuracy as possible to re increase that resistance. Um, Eagle Eye is really great on her, so when she's getting counter attacks, um, she's gonna attack two champions at random, put poison on them, and push back their turn meter. Uh, you definitely want to get Laura Steel with perception, just so she's got more chance, well, just to bump up your accuracy a little bit. Uh, Master Hexer, actually that is good for Hex and Poison as well, so that means we can actually throw Petrification out more turns as well, so that's really useful. And then Eagle Eye for that extra accuracy, okay, bit of extra resistance, um, reduce the first critical hit that we receive, um, sorry, reduce any critical hits that we receive, um, increasing any healing and shields that we may get, um, Resurgence, great ability. Uh, removing obviously she's probably not gonna have buffs on her but if she does it will get removed shadow healing so anytime that they heal on their team we're gonna get healed as well but only can happen once per turn okay so there is a chance that we can place leech with our petrification but um not really gonna happen to be honest but doesn't hurt to have it it's probably the only, we don't have a lot of healing on this team so it does help uh you know every little bit helps uh, yeah, Retribution, um, so for counter-attack, and then some more counter-attacks. And this mastery, basically, um, we're probably never going to get CC'd, so there's a very good chance we can proc some counter-attacks if the rest of our team get hit. And that is the end of the video, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed it and it's been interesting. And, uh, you know, I've not only just shown you, like, how the process of, like, building, you know, um, getting your 12 champions and building your 3v3 arena defensive teams but also showing you how to actually test your teams and to stick with it and just you know you've got to prevail and you know mix up your teams until you find something that works um i don't know if i did mention this but another really handy tip is what when you are in 3v3 or classic arena and you come up against a really hard team you think whoa that team was boss then you need to just just take a screenshot on your phone, on your PC, and just copy that team, try and figure out how they've built their champions and just completely mimic it. And that is another way of building arena team comps is just stealing from other people. Because to be honest, it's almost pretty much impossible to build completely unique team comps because, you know, I don't know, like 1 million people at least play this game 
And if that many people play this game, of course, every comp is going to be invented already. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I will see you in my next video. Peace.